What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherlock.com. Uh, and today I am bringing you a look back at uh, one championship's one six three card, uh, which went down here on uh, uh, Saturday during the day here during the morning time. Uh, I suppose it's uh, it's just after three here, uh, and the card is just wrapped. So uh, still, I suppose uh, you know mid morning time over in over in the states, and the card has wrapped up. We had the other one championship card uh, last night. The review of that is already out on YouTube and on Sherdog.com. If you haven't seen it yet, please check that out. A very, very good card last night. And another very good card today. And it's interesting, you kind of learn something sometimes when there's MMA on at normal hours here in Ireland, uh, you know, and people kind of walk in and members of the family and stuff come in and see different fights. And the one thing I learned, and I've said this before on these... But other people as well, they, they like different sort of fights. Like, you look at one, there's no gloves, you know, in the, the grappling. You look at another one, there's the four-ounce gloves. You look at another one, there's the kickbox of gloves. You look and they have, you know, the Mai Tai uh, ribbons around their, their arms as well. It, it's very different. And that's one thing I've really... I've complimented one championship on. I've complimented Bellator on doing things differently as well. I've kind of, uh, complimented PFL on doing things differently. And I really, look, if we're being honest, one championship are the most different of all. And I think that's a good thing, because usually someone would walk in and I'd be, maybe, look, Cage Warriors would be the, the normal one, and they're thinking, oh, you're watching the UFC, oh, the UFC's on early. You can't really mistake one championship for the UFC, you know, because there's knee, even in MMA fights, there's kind of knees on the ground and things like that. And it's very, very interesting The people who maybe wouldn't have a keen eye for MMA or know a bit of it, obviously, because of being around me and stuff, but um, they picked that up. And I think... I wonder. No, the one last night obviously was on Amazon, and the one today is is on uh, is on YouTube in different places. But I wonder is that a thing? If you're on Amazon, you see there's a live event on, you watch it, and think, "Oh, this is something a little bit different." I'm interested to see how that works, how this uh, relationship, I suppose, with Amazon works for one championship because. I really do think it's it's one of those things where the, we think too much sometimes about the hardcores in MMA, and it's actually <clears throat> the. You know, the fan that kind of comes across something or the fan that discovers something or walks in when a hardcore is watching it and enjoys it. Those can sometimes be the most important people and sometimes we can forget about them. But uh, I, re- I really, that was one thing I really, really noticed today watching uh, watching that card that it's not just me. It's not just the people discussing it who see the differences in one, cha- <coughs> sorry, in one championship compared to... Um, the other organisations, I suppose, it's you know, it is everyone. So very, very interesting that to me. Um, again, I think I said in the last preview, I, I think the morning card after the night card is, you know, there, there wasn't that many people online. I, I kind of. I got up and I uh, a couple of hours after it started went back and caught the fights and caught up with it by the time the uh, the Ang fight came on I I I was almost going to pronounce his name correctly <laughs> but I'm like wait no I'm not coming to the but um <clears throat> I didn't see really many people online many people talking about it so it's very very early when the card starts over in the states and even here it's during the day and there's rugby and there's you know different things on the World Cup as well is starting now so people are getting ready for that and I don't know you know on a Saturday do they have time to watch it whereas if it's in a Friday morning you might be in work or you might be you know fake that you're on a Zoom call or something like that and, and watch it I feel like it's a little bit better but um, you know that's a kind of a, a side uh, issue anyway I suppose um, let's get into the card so all in all look what we had last night the Amazon card we had a lot of very good fights, but maybe not a lot of very good finishes. We had some very good finishes on this card and some good fights as well. So it was, you know, from these two cards, we got everything, really. So it was really, really good. Um, and so at the top of the card, look, for me, I, I'm obviously you know an MMA guy and, and I love MMA and I'm not the biggest kickboxer or Muay Thai expert in the world, but I... I, 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 this is probably a podcast for another day and maybe a, an analysis piece podcast. But watching this one uh, welterweight kickboxing match between uh, Hiroki Akimoto and Pechitong Pechfergus, you noticed um, a game plan. And I, I actually talked to, I think, uh, what's his name, Irsland there a couple of weeks ago when I was on the, the, the post fight press conference for one championship. There's a you can fight a different way in these sports, the kickbox and the Thai sports, especially if it's over five rounds, then you can fight in MMA. It's very, very hard to put on a kind of a slower start to an MMA fight 
work your way into it and maybe win the last few rounds. Uh, now, it's we've seen people doing it. It is possible, but it's also so dangerous. And I think when you are an MMA fighter and you have your MMA coaches behind you, there's probably a chat that happens, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people have come up with, look, will we do that? Will we start slow and get faster and faster and faster? Maybe our opponent uh, isn't the, hasn't the best cardio in the world and let's win the fight in the fourth and fifth round. And they go, look, that's a good game plan, but what about the first and second round? You know, <laughs> what if I get clipped? What if there's a big shot landed? It's a very hard thing to do. Now, Pitch Fergus in this fight... He has had like 450 fights or something like that. So not only he does is it a different sport, but he also has the confidence in, I'm sure, doing it literally hundreds of times before to do it again here. Uh, and that is a big, big thing as well. But the fight itself, very, very interesting. I was really impressed with uh, with Akimoto. I, do you know what? I thought it was a very close fight and uh, Pitch Fergus ended up winning it. Now, you know, I'm no expert in, in the kickboxing uh, scoring criteria or anything like that, but wh- whichever way, it's a very, very close fight. If I had to flip my kind and give it to someone, I think I would have given it to Akimoto just because that start was so good. So much forward pressure. Uh, Pitch Fergus was trying to land the harder shots. He was holding his ground, but he wasn't really landing them. Um, Akimoto was landing in twos. Very, very slow start from, from Pitch Fergus. Was landing a couple, but not that much. I think Akimoto definitely won the first round. Uh, in the second round, uh, Pitch Fergus tr- was upping the pace, trying to come forward a little bit more. Akimoto's pressure was telling again, though. Um, there was a knee from Pitch Fergus. Then a second one and some leg kicks from Akimoto. So a very close round uh, again. Now, in the third round, there was a little bit of a change because I think the kicks to the body and the knees from Akimoto or from um, Pitch Fergus stopped Akimoto's effectiveness or stopped the effectiveness of his pressure should I say and it was around here that the redness in the body really 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 tried started to show there was a liver kick with about 50 seconds left and then one with maybe 15 seconds left which were massive for Pitch Fergus. He landed a big ha- uh, left hand in the middle of that as well, and he ate a head kick. You know, he's one of those guys, you look at him, as like, he's, he, this guy can't get knocked out. <laughs> you know, it really, 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 it felt like that. It was like, he can do what he wants. He could uh, put on this game plan, and he's just not, simply not going to get knocked out. Now, they say, you fuck around, you'll find out, so maybe, so maybe sometime will happen, but it certainly didn't look like that here. In the fourth round, the body work here was something, look, talking about something we'll never see in MMA, absolutely, absolutely insane. Just, I, I think I, I counted five different body shots that were landed in maybe a 30 second um, uh, period for Pitch Fergus in this fourth round. One was a beautiful left hook. One was just a straight liver kick. One was a jab to the body. There was a oh, there was a, a knee to the um, a knee to the solar plexus as well. That was at the start of the fifth, but there was one in the fourth as well. And there was something else thrown in there, maybe a teep or something like that. The body work was absolutely phenomenal. But look, Akimoto to his credit, he he kept coming forward, and he actually, I think. He tried his best in that four round to, to keep that forward pressure going, but the pace finally started slowing from for the first time in the fight. A head kick from, from Petch Fergus at the end of that then was very, very big. As I said, that fifth round started with that step in knee to the solar plexus. Um, his cup got knocked out then, and it kind of... <clears throat> it, I, I don't know. It kind of broke down the round a little bit. It didn't really get br- properly back into uh, into rhythm. There was a knee to the head from Pitch Fergus and a straight left from Pitch Fergus as well, which uh, you know probably won him that round as well. So look, lots of close rounds in there. I don't think uh, it's not a robbery, definitely. But I, I think um, Pitch Fergus winning it is. It was a split decision as well, I think, and I think that is, you know, not not to go full idiot here, but a split decision is probably, probably the right thing to happen here. It was a very, very close fight. Neither guy could have won it, so very impressive main event there uh, in, the, uh, in the old kickboxing. There was a heavyweight kickboxing match under that then, and this was absolute... Fire emoji. I wonder, can we get fire emojis coming out here? That's what we need here. This was unbelievable. Some comeback. There was a great comeback from Christian E last night in the card, and this was the great comeback of this card. Uh, Roman uh, Kralia was, was winning on the outside in the first round, uh, but as uh, Iraj Azizpour upped the pace, landed a left high kick, 
a spinning back fist and then he got this clubbing knockdown. Like when I when I use the word clubbing, I mean it. He just it it was an old school windmill. <laughs> you know, he absolutely clubbed him to the ground. But then he got too crazy. And this is the thing I talked about Michael Chandler last week going for that takedown. He'll regret that for the rest of his career. This is one of those moments that I think as his poor will regret. He just got too crazy, didn't pick his shots, was throwing that windmill left hand again when his opponent was like you know, that's granted to throw that windmill left when uh, Roman is so much taller and longer than you and fighting long but when he's not no longer fighting long because he's hurt and he's against the cage you're just overthrowing a shot then that's where you need to pick a jab that's where you need to pick a liver shot and a right hand over the top but he didn't do that and the round ended and uh, and Roman survived and it wasn't necessarily that he survived it um, he, he looked okay the second round though uh, Krila came out and he was on fire landing just launching shots, absolutely launching shots, landing lovely knees, lovely combinations, and the right hand knocked down Azizpour. <clears throat> in my opinion, in my opinion, this fight should have been stopped then. Uh, got the, the standing A count or the, the, the kneeling A count, if you want to put it that way. Uh, and then the ref kind of stepped in between them as they got back to fighting. The, then the ref stepped out and Azizpour was in absolute bits um roman was just beating him up and um it was stopped in straight away so i look i, I don't mind him letting him get back up and then giving him a chance you know we see that all the time but to kind of get in between them uh roman kind of hit him with a shot as the referee was kind of in between him which was very very weird it was a rest fall more than anyone else's but um yeah, I looked to fight in the straight away after that then anyway, so it wasn't too bad, but yeah, I did. it was a bit of a weird finish, but credit to Roman uh, Creelia, uh, very, very good performance, very, very good comeback, and now he becomes a two-way kickboxing world champion, he already held the light heavyweight belt, so now he gets the heavyweight strap uh, as well, so he's what, 50, 52 pounds of gold now or something in one championship, oh, that looks good, uh, so yeah, fair play to him there. Uh, I suppose the biggest uh, one-sided beatdown of the night came in the next fight, the the top MMA fight of the night, where Shin Yaoki took on Saeed uh, Is Gat Mahayev. Uh, Saeed, look, anyone who watched the preview knew that this was coming. If we're being honest, Saeed's a very, very good fighter. He's Islam Akachev uh, in his corner, fighting out of you know Habib, seen fighting out of Dagestan, uh, and he's one of these new Dagestani fighters where he can punch, jab. Strike, wrestle, has just sambo jujitsu the whole lot. He can do it all, um, and he did, he did some of that here. He didn't get much time to show it, but he did some of it here. Ioki actually started well, in my opinion. He was landing some high kicks. Um, he wasn't backing up. He was trying to get forward. He was trying to look for his openings, but that didn't really last well. Uh, Saeed landed jabs, landed low kicks. It was those low kicks as well that I think um, really, really hurt Ioki. When you're Ioki and you're the smaller man in there, and someone comes out and he just batters you, like when, you know... When you're fighting a more straight up game and he's fighting like that, the leg forward sort of game, I think that is a real, real like sign that you don't have much of a chance here against someone like Saeed. He's just too good. A massive right hand uh, from Izmagayev. Um, uh, or is Gamayev. I always call, call him Izmagayev. Is Gamayev. It is. Uh, is a Gamayev, even. Um, but that right hand knocked down. Uh, Shinya Yoki, huge ground and pound, Ayoki covering up, and that was that. Uh, very, very quick fight, very, very quick finish. It was 226 of, uh, of round one. And uh, look, uh, Saeed called out Christian Lee afterwards. Uh, Christian Lee obviously went up, but I, I'm sure he'd be happy enough to come back down. This is a great fight because if you, if you, Put them up against each other. Two very good wrestlers. Two very good strikers. Two guys who can hit hard. Two guys who can take a punch. They're on, uh, you know, a headlong bat for each other. And that is a fight if one championship put it on. As someone who has now analyzed probably the last three of Saeed's fights. And probably the same for, for Christian even more maybe. I... I don't see many faults in either of their games. Now, maybe Leeds showed a few last night, and the next time we're analysing it, uh, you know, with a, with a couple of months to to, uh, 
I suppose uh, stew over it we will uh, we will get a different analysis but having said that a great great fight and hopefully it happens and for Shinya Aoki look I'm sure Shinya will be back and we'll uh, we'll see him again probably 10-15 more times in, in the cage um, the next fight then was uh, I suppose the, the most high profile fight I suppose worldwide maybe uh, Shinya uh, uh, Shinya uh, Yushin Okami versus Anlan Sang I think I got it right there Anlan Sang I always call him Anlan Sang but it's Anlan Sang that's it come on we got it um Look, to me, this is a bad stoppage in this fight from, from Herb Dean. It was, a, it was a bit of an odd fight. And I think it was an odd fight because um, Angla was the guy who was always going to try to land the big hard shots. And Okami was always the guy who was going to try to get the fight to the ground. And I felt like they were both kind of desperate to do that. Now, Okami way more desperate than Angla. 100%. So the fight started off with a big head kick from uh, uh, from Angla. Um, immediate takedown for Yushin Okami. Just immediately went for a takedown. Did not get it, but immediately went for it. And when it was stopped, he just fell to the ground and kind of pulled guard. Um, Angla ended up on top, landed some good shots. I, like... <sighs> Okami pulling guard there. I, I thought Angla probably should have stayed there, to be honest. Um, because I don't... Like, does Okami have a great guard? Like, is he going to be throwing up triangles? Is he going to be throwing up arm bars? I, uh, may, maybe I need to go back and watch more, some more of his fights. I, did, I didn't watch a, a whole lot. I watched a couple of his recent fights just to see the recent Okami. I, maybe I'm wrong now, but... Uh, is Yushin Okami like the... Uh, the uh, you know triangle guy and armbar guy in modern MMA definitely not modern MMA anyway but ever I'm not sure so yeah but anyway that didn't really make any much of a difference <coughs> they got back up um, knee on the way in then for Amla was absolutely beautiful after um, o- Okami went for a takedown just a beautiful knee we always hear about it. you know McGregor saw always say it back in the day someone comes in I'll hit him with that knee on the way in we actually saw two of these we get to the one in the other fight uh, as well but a beautiful beautiful knee uh, on the way in and then there was a grounded knee inside Yushin survived there was ground and pound from Angla uh, the crowd at this stage were going absolutely wild absolutely wild it was like a hot tag in, in, a, <laughs> in a WWE match or something it was crazy because usually, like, I I very much blur out the crowds a lot when I'm watching these fights. I watch it kind of on low volume. I just want to see what's going on. I want to see. But this one, it was it was illuminating. You know, you couldn't put help here the crowd. And you know what I loved here? Um, Angla landed this small little, like, I'd be interested. Anyone go back and watch it. It was kind of, it was from half guard, I think, maybe, maybe side control. But he landed this little grounded knee to the face. Obviously, shot you can use in other organizations. But it was a lovely little shot. Lovely shot from the, the ground and pound position, I suppose, where you'd normally get it. Now, I thought that was kind of a one that would maybe open up more shots, open up a pass, open up, you know, 10, 12 shots and maybe get the finish. But Herb called it there. Um, maybe he saw something in Yushin's eyes that I didn't see. But... I thought this was a very, very early stoppage. Um, maybe Herb got to, you know, watch back the, the Christian E fight from last night, even though Christian E went on to win it. But uh, to me, he should have stopped that in the first round. To me, he should have let this go a little bit. Like, okay, I uh, probably would have won anyway. I, I definitely think he would have won. I think he's a better fighter. I predict him to win coming in. But uh, to me, that fight wasn't over at that stage. He was he hit him with the, the knee inside. He hit him with a couple of knees on the ground. But I don't think he was badly hurt or anything like that. Now, look, when the fight ended, Yushin kind of went to his back. He didn't complain or anything like that. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Herb did see something. Maybe the eyes went back in his head. Uh, look, if Herb made that call, he made a call. Maybe he got it right. But, yeah, it didn't look great to me. Anyway, um, look, they'll both move on. Angla is probably back towards the title mix now again in Okami. You know, hard to know where Okami uh, is going to go from here. How about Angla versus Saldic? How about that? I mean, you know, if Christian e is going back down, you know, Angla will fight around anyway, class around there. So will Saldic, we know that. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Biggest shock of the night then in the next uh, fight, Yuya Wakamatsu versus Wu Sung Hoon. 
Uh, fast start from Yuya as always. Uh, right kick to the body, then a jab. Yuya clips him with a left hook, knocked him down. And you're thinking at that stage, okay, Wakamatsu well, just going to be too much for him, for him here. This is a guy who's fought at the very, very top level, only lost to the best. I think I don't have it up in front of me, but I, I, his only two losses, I'm pretty sure, are to Adriano Morais and Demetrius Johnson, recently anyway. And you're thinking, okay, this guy, he's just going to go on. We'll, you know, I watched a good bit of Wakamatsu over the last few, few months, and uh, it didn't happen that way. Uh, Wu was switching inside, landed some kicks, but there was really nothing on them until he landed a big right hand. And that changed everything. It changed the whole of that right hand, changed everything. And it wasn't so much what it, it did to Wakamatsu, it was the confidence it gave to Wu Uh He landed a few more. And then Yuya started to back up. And when he started to back up, Wu started coming forward. And he just up the pace and up the pace and up the pace and landed shot after shot after shot against the cage. He was literally running around after him. And you could see the panic in Wakamatsu. He was falling off the cliff. That's the only thing I could say. He was, you know, jumping out of a building. He, it was panic. It was just going down. There was no stopping it. And you have this absolute beast in Wu Sung Hoon running around after you 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 panicked at so many shots just got overwhelmed <clears throat> that's the only word you could use here overwhelmed um, Wakamatsu ended up uh, getting um, mounted by Wu big ground upon an absolute shellacking on the ground and then it ended and that was it um the uh, the fight ended in round one and two forty six. So like it started very good and went very very badly, very 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 quickly, um, and it's a very interesting um, road forward for both of these guys now. Like it, to me, it felt like this one was was a, a fight set up for Wakamatsu to win to get back into contention. But it's Wu who's going to be in contention now, and let's see where he goes. Let's see where Wakamatsu goes. Um, maybe Wu versus uh, Atrana Morais next. But that would be an, an interesting fight, I think. Uh, we'll see where Demetrius goes and all. Uh, maybe they, they, they do the third one. Actually, they probably will do the third one of that, won't they? So, very interesting. We'll see uh, how that uh, how that works out. Um, maybe my favourite fight of the night was the next one. Uh, Quan Wonil against Mark Abelardo. This was a real, real, real meeting of different styles. Just so interesting. Uh, Il is long. Um jabs a lot throws lovely technical shots Abelardo is short throws those big hooks loves the pressure the pace coming forward and that's how the fight started and that's how it kept going as I said Ill was long touching him up on the outside Abelardo as he always as I said this in the preview he just takes the shots and keeps throwing that's as simple as if you've seen one Abelardo fight you've seen them all and actually do you know what he looked better in this fight he um, he tried to take down early but it was stopped jabs from Ill Abelardo was coming forward and landing hard it was a huge body shot at the end of a lovely combination from Ill which was you know preceded lovely jabs again Big uppercut from Abelardo that kept him in it. So he wasn't out of this round at all. Uh, Ill definitely went in the round and Ill hurt him bad uh, at the, the latter half of the round. Abelardo covered up. But look fine then. Like it, it was, he looked really badly hurt and then he looked fine. Uh, Abelardo ended the, f- the round with a combination and he did get a takedown on the bell, but uh, it, it was definitely Ill ahead at that stage. Um, round two, just. <sighs> Unrelenting combos for Mill. Just so many combos. The body work was amazing again. Body work all night was so good. Takedown tries no good from Abelardo, but he held him against the cage and he eventually got it. And that showed a different side, I think, of Abelardo's game as well. He's relentless in the striking, relentless in the in the defensive striking, more so maybe than the offensive striking. But this was relentless with the takedown. He got it. It was very, very good. Look, Ill did get straight back up. Abelardo landed a left hook. I thought uh, Kung Wonil was landing less in this round than he was in the first few jabs, though. But I liked Abelardo's hooks, and I like if you're if you're scoring this round by round, I would have had it one one after that. I thought Abelardo did enough in that second round. I thought he did very very well. Take down for Abelardo very very quickly in the third round. Then controls for a second in kind of that, you know, that quarter mount position, but Il got back to his knees and eventually back up. Um, Abelardo throws him down again though when he did get back up uh, almost got his back but again it was one of the, like, remember Michael Chandler against Poirier last week just a mistake 
And the fight ended up getting back up. Il landed jabs, landed a lovely body kick, lovely fadeaway left hook from Il. Uh, Abelardo tried to clinch, but it was no good. Abelardo landed a right hand, which stunned him, but straight back to jabbing again. It was on it like he looked like Dylan Dennis uh, against Anthony Taylor, just backing up. But he was fine, absolutely fine, and kept straight back again. These two guys, the chins in them were unreal. Uh, but then the fight changed. Obviously, Mark Abelardo came in for a low takedown. And he landed a knee, just similar to the one I was talking about earlier on. Landed knees, he came inside, and it was one of those kind of ones right off the side of the head, just clubbed him into the side of the head. I saw it straight away, which is unusual, to be honest, because I usually don't actually pick these things out. I'm very bad for that. But the commentary did, and now I don't blame the commentary at all, because it was a very hard one to pick out. But... um. Uh, Abelardo kind of half-face-planted, I would say. Um... Uh, he'll step backwards over him and through ground and pound, didn't land anything. And then the referee came in and stopped it. Uh, I would call it a questionable stoppage. I did think that knee was big. Honestly, I think that knee did hurt him really, really badly. I think the refs saw that. I think it was a good stoppage. I, I could still say it's a questionable stoppage. I think I, I can definitely see an argument for some people not liking it, but I did like this stoppage. So very good win for Ail. I think he was... Look, he was probably going on to win the fight. I think he was winning the third. But, uh, you know, a good win and, and a lovely knee to, to finish it off there as well. Um, the undercard, then, we will run through that. It was, it was pretty uh, enjoyable. Kickboxing bout, first of all, Bruno Chavez against Ahmed Krinic. Uh, Ahmed knocked him over at the start of the round. I, I find it very odd. Like, sometimes you get knocked over and it's not an A count. And other times you get knocked down and it, it, it feels like they're just picking Jews. Like, oh, he kind of fell over. But, like, to me, Ahmed absolutely knocked over Bruno Chavez here. And may- maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, stiff left from Krinic after that. Head kick from Bruno, leg kick from Krinic, body shot from Bruno. They were going back and forth there. There was a big right hand from Bruno, then a body kick from Bruno. Superman lit punch late from Krinic was very, very good. Back and forth in the second round without much landing. Bruno landed uh, right hand midway through, which in my opinion was the best shot of the round. Krinic's left uh, leg kick, sorry, though, were, were landing well and were probably the, the, the best, I suppose, shots of the fight. Um, lovely body kick, um, then two body punches from Krinic. Krinic up the pace late on. Uh, Bruno was thrown very little, very, very little. They said in commentary as well, and I, w- I would tend to agree with that. Round three, massive body punch from Krinic, but Bruno just absolutely edit. Um the body and leg attacks from Krinich, as I said, all night were very, very good, but the body work got more as the fight went on. That step-in body need off from Chavez was absolutely fantastic. Bruno was uh, was backing up after that, which is like, why you're landing some great shots there. Why are you backing up? He was trying to draw him in, but he wasn't he wasn't doing anything, he wasn't landing anything, which was just so weird. Eventually landed a right hand and in a second, but it's just not enough. And uh, Krinich ended up winning the decision there. I think Chavez will look back at that and he'll he'll think it's a poor uh, a poor outing from himself and you know what I, I think he'd be right. Uh, very odd fight in between Ahmed Muchtaba and Abreu Arayim Amorim. Um, Ahmed was doing like this uh, karate dance on the outside to start the fight. Uh, Amorim was uh, was going forward and landing uh, right hands. Ahmed looked confident in his defense, and I suppose he had a right to be look very kind of flowy on the outside, but not much landing. You know, in the first minute or two, it is not much landed. The body kicked into the left hand from Ahmed was probably the best of the early goings, and then Ahmed got a takedown, which is odd, I suppose, against the, a guy whose name is uh, Magalish, um, <laughs> BJJ black belt, third degree BJJ black belt, but he was right to do it. Well, after a while, ended up on bottom. Um, Magalesh, if anyone listened to the, the preview show, I said he loved the knee and belly, and he got it again here, if only for a second, uh, and then he got a takedown of his own, a double leg, and from that point, I thought Mujtaba was in trouble here, but he struggled back up, he got to a clinch, another takedown with a body locked uh, from Magalesh, and then there was a Kimura at him from Ahmed, and it looked from the Kimura attempt that Amarim was kind of, not panicking a bit, but he was like, oh, this could be on. And then there was a kind of a transition. Um, Muchtaba landed in, uh, landed a triangle, I suppose, but his leg was in. His leg was trapped. Cut it, cinched it up, and Amarim tapped. Now, I'm no BJJ expert or anything like that, and look, at if you're a third degree black belt in BJJ, you know a damn sight more than me, but it's, I've never, I don't think I've, I've been watching MMA for, uh, I don't know, 
2006 until now, what years? What a year have we? Oh God, 16 years. I don't think I've ever seen a leg in triangle. Uh, anyone else out there agree, agree with me? This just seems, and you know, people can get caught. I, I remember talking to a BJJ coach once, and he goes, "If it chokes you, it chokes you. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it looks right. It doesn't matter if it looks technically wrong. If it chokes you, it chokes you." And that look, it choked him and choked him. But would that leg not cause more space? Would that leg not push the triangle out? <sighs> very weird to me. Look, very very odd. Maybe he has some different sort of thing that no one else has. Maybe the leg actually made it worse and trapped him in there more. Maybe he panicked or something happened. It just, yeah, it, it didn't look like a normal submission. But sometimes we don't always see normal positions. But anyway, a very, very good submission. A very, very good win for uh, uh, for Muchtaba. Right, Muay Thai, Ashi Shinigawa against Rui Botello. Very, very enjoyable fight was this one. A right hand from Ashi started things off. Uh, Shinigawa then knocked him down with a right hand but it wasn't a knockdown one of those ones Rui was aggressive with his combinations into the clinch body kick from uh, Ashihi uh, Rui combos again into the body body kick massive exchanges late really really good first round second round high pace from Rui very high pace throughout the round uh, knees in the clinch from both guys right hand after catching the leg from Shinigawa was a big shot lots of shots just off the mark for both I felt it was one of those ones like if if 50% more of the fight the shots had landed this would have been an all out war but they didn't it was very and that was good defence more than anything else huge left hook from Rui after catching the body kick knees in the clinch from Rui uh, as well Rui rocked him in a, a, a real hard shot at the end a right hand at the end it was a very very good round for him uh, both were throwing wild but again good defensively in the third Rui right hand rocks him hard uh, and that was the biggest shot of the round knockdown for Shinigawa was not given I thought Rui won that round Shinigawa ended up winning um, I didn't agree with this one either. I, I thought uh, I thought Rui Patelli won that again. I'll say not a Muay Thai kickboxing a judging criteria expert, so I will leave that to uh, to the experts. Then there's a submission grappling bout. This one landed. Let me just check my notes here. Uh, Forty two seconds. Uh, Bianca, what's her name? Bianca Basilio defeated Sakumoto. Um, look, Sakumoto went for a takedown. Basilio pushed her down, took the back. Choked her. Not much more to say. That was it. Looked absolutely fantastic. She looks an absolute beast. So I'd love to see her in there again. And in the first fight of the night, do you know what? This is a weird one because you look at these two guys and you look at the the, the physique of them, and Garabets looks like the the grappler and Pucci looks like the striker. But it was the other way around. And I don't know why grapplers and strikers look that way. I just thought that. But um, Pucci tried to take down early. I th- I actually thought his striking looked uh, way better. Um. Uh, Kirik landed some lovely one twos early. Pucci pushed him up against the fence, got a big body lock, but could not get the takedown. Pucci was uh, le- just leading forward and walking straight into the right hand over and over and over. Did get a, a one two before some uh, from late strikes, but you know Garabets was kind of having the better of it there. Leg kicks from Garabets. Massive uppercut from Garabets in to stop the takedown, uh, and that hurt Pucci. Double jab into the right hand. Garabets rocked him hard with a right hand, with his third right hand in a row, and Pucci looked in trouble here. Um, he was wide open every time he threw, just wide open every time he threw. Uh, he shot him with two minutes left, it was stopped. Garabets knocks him down massively with a right hand in the last 40 sec- seconds. Looked bad, but Herb let him at it. That was another one I thought Herb, he probably should have stopped it there, if I'm being honest. Clinch from Pucci in, in the third. Some knees. Over two minutes of the clinch until Herb broke him up, which I think was a good decision from Herb. Pucci left hand and a right. Looked good in there, but then Garabets drops him hard again. Against the run of play, this time it was. Garabets uh, was in his guard, a few elbows. No attacks from the bottom from Bucci at all. Like, you're losing the fight. You know you're losing the fight. There's 45 seconds or a minute left. You're in the bottom. You're a BJJ expert, and you put on the body triangle from the bottom. 
you know, at that point you deserve to lose, in my opinion. And, and he did, and he did lose, and, and a very good win from Gara Betts there. So, yeah, all in all, a, a very, very good card. I'll, I'll run you quickly through the, the results again in the grappling. Bianca Basilo uh, won her bout in 42 seconds around round one. The Mai Tai, uh, Shinigawa defeated Botelho by a split decision. In the kickboxing, we had Krinich beating Chavez by unanimous decision. Kareela beating Azipur by TKO in round two at 128. Uh, and in the main event, Pitch Fergus defeated Aki Moto. Um, and then in the MMA, some very, very good fights. As I just mentioned, Garabets beat Pucci by unanimous decision. Mujtaba defeated uh, Amarim by a, a leg in triangle choke at uh, 4.32 of round one. Kwan Won Il beat Mark Abelardo by TKO round three, 3.44. Uh, Wu defeated Wakamatsu in round 1, 2 46. Uh, Anla Nsong uh, defeated Yushino Kami by TKO at 142 of round 1. And in uh, 226 of round 1, uh, Said Iz Gamayev uh, defeated the legend Shinya Aoki via TKO. So, all in all, very, very good card. Very, very good double card for one championship. And uh, we will be back next week with more one championship because the uh, 2nd of December they are back again so we'll have two pre-shows for those two shows over here at the Sheehan Show and we'll have two post-shows as well I think on the, the Sunday that's so a little bit later next time but uh, we will have them for you as well right I leave it at that thanks everyone for listening if you enjoyed this give an all thumbs up leave a comment below tell everyone you enjoyed it the one championship fans are my favourite fans honestly they love this show and I love them so fair play to all of you and uh, from me Sean Sheehan from Sherdog.com we'll see you all next time